Hi, Aries. I know, I'm late. I had to take a vacation. Like, it was just necessary. And so, here we are in March. Mercury retrograde is happening in your 12th house. Doesn't it feel good to have that Uranus transit away from you? I think you're still trying to get adjusted. There was almost kind of like this lurching forward. But, ooh, things look pretty good. Things look pretty good. The lover's card is the first card out. And the ten of cups. So there's definitely a heart center at the top. I have sage going. If you see some smoke coming, it was like going a different direction, and now it's decided to detour back this way. So if you see some smoke on the side, it'll burn out eventually. Um, so yeah, there's definitely this heart-centered feeling in March, which is what Mercury retrograde in Pisces is trying to teach everybody. You know, and I think that you're ready, like you're ready to have, you're ready to go the distance in a relationship. You're ready to have that relationship now. Two of cups, damn. So good, Aries. So I'm so glad I'm doing your reading now. I was, it was like the debate between yours and Libra's. And um, so I'm really glad that I'm doing yours now. This is beautiful, temperance. Um, the patience to get here has been pretty rough, but that Uranus transit taught you a lot about what you were holding on to and what you really needed to release and let go of. And um, now with Chiron in your sign for the next seven years, <clears throat> sure, there might be some bumps in the road with that, but I don't think that um, you should be afraid of it because it's probably just like the little speed bumps that you were missing along the way. It's not like it's a pothole that's going to, um, that, you know, like it's a speed bump. It's not a pothole. It's not going to pop your tire, right? It's not going to like blow out all of your steam that you've been building up all this time. <coughs> Excuse me. But that lurch of it, like that, that kind of like halting energy of Uranus going into Taurus um, was pretty rough for a couple of weeks. And I almost feel like you guys were hidden, like you were trying to hide from it um, a little bit. And now you're dealing with this Mercury retrograde a lot better than some signs are. The fire signs aren't too shabby when it comes to this Mercury retrograde. Um, the water signs, the earth signs are, and probably the air signs a little bit, are having a tougher time. Um, if you are dealing with an air sign, possibly a Gemini, Oop, hold on a second. Sorry. That was weird. My computer just did something funny. Um, if you are dealing with a Gemini, I think that what you're do what's happening here, and it doesn't even have to be a Gemini. It could be another air sign, or it could just be somebody that you're not entirely 100% sold on yet. Like, there's this very strong connection. It could also be a Sagittarius, but there's this very strong connection between the two of you. And um, I want to say that the Five of Swords here is more of you trying to figure this out during Mercury Retrograde. And I almost want to just tell you to feel through it. Like, try, and I've been telling everybody that. Like, don't think so hard. Don't try and put anything logic, especially when it comes to the emotional aspect of things. Be patient with yourself because... During this very watery retrograde with um, having to release really old karma, like the retrograde started at the very ending end degrees of Pisces. Like it was almost in your sign and then it went retrograde. And when it's at the very end of the entire zodiac, this is like that karmic lesson that we're trying to learn and release. So that's what Mercury retrograde is trying to do, but you're not going to be able to like rely on your logic. For it. You're going to really have to feel your way through this retrograde. And it's only for another couple of weeks. I honestly believe that this Five of Swords will probably, it's, it's, this is the speed bump. You know, this isn't the pothole, you know, and I'm using those analogies because um, all I can think about is all of the potholes that we have in this state right now after all of the snow and all of the salt on the roads and like 
How many people on the side of the roads have I seen with like blown tires? And those kinds of things happen when Uranus moves into Taurus. It's like, have you been keeping up with your material things? If not, boom, here we go. Here's a blown tire. Here's, you know, whatever. So um, I, I almost want to say don't, don't push it. Don't force yourself to think of something that is not logical anyways. Like emotions aren't going to be logical anyways. Especially if it's this strong of a relationship, this strong of a bond here. So let's see. What's the lover's card? I'm curious. Is this a Gemini we're dealing with? Is this a very strong bond between the two of you? Ah. <clears throat> see? Don't think so hard. Just feel your way through it. The King of Cups and the Six of Swords. This could very well be a water sign that you're dealing with also. Or somebody's dealing with water sign. Or this is just you. Like the Six of Swords is moving away from rough waters into calmer waters. If there's a person in your life that you've either just met or you've been with for a while, it's like, it's almost like a renewal. And um, a renewal of the emotions, the emotional aspect. And a lot of times retrogrades will do that. It'll bring people back from the past in order for us to either clear up the karmic mess that we had with them or to move away from it. So it really depends on your situation that you're going through. Um, but the cards are definitely saying like, you know, you got to use your emotions in it. You have to, you have to use the emotional maturity right now. And what does that mean? It means going inward. What does this 10 of cups mean to you? Could be a Virgo. A lot of times Virgos come out as air signs as well because they're ruled by Mercury. But because, Mer because Virgo is ruled by Mercury, I feel like this 10 of cups is asking you to say, what is it that really is my 10 of cups? Is it, the, is it an illusion that I've been holding on to? And I think the Chiron transit is really asking you that as well. Like, what does my full abundance and happiness mean to me? What does that truly mean to me? Is it all of the material possessions? Or is it the actual feelings and emotions of it? Um, and first and foremost, you need to have that Ten of Cups feeling within yourself. I'm a huge advocate of telling people that. You need to be your own soulmate first. Be your own soulmate first because when you know exactly how to love yourself, it will be so much better to love other people. It will be so much easier to love other people. And it will also attract the person that you are wanting in your life, right? Um, yeah, I think the clarity is going to come at the full moon in Libra, but... Let's, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, uh, we have the strength card on the two of cups. So whatever relationship this is or whatever connection you have going right now, it really is making it, 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 it's almost a feeling of making you stronger. It's helping you with that inner strength that you've been searching for for so long and that uranus transit probably took away a lot of that inner strength because you had to be totally broken down and totally wiped clean of everything that that had happened to you in the past right you had to go through that uranus transit to realize what it is that you can't hold on to anymore and now you're being gifted with a beautiful relationship this could also even be just a friendship a beautiful friendship or friendships that give you inner strength. But first and foremost, you're really getting back to yourself. And I think a lot of that has to do with the inner work that you're dealing with. So um, two major arcanas on a major arcana is kind of a big deal. We have the world and the moon on temperance. The closing of chapters, the closing of cycles um, and I feel like you have done that quite a bit in the last couple of months is a really big thing for you. And I think by the Libra full moon at the end of this month, you could also be dealing with a cancer energy. Um, but the Libra full moon at the end of this month is going to show you um, where you have had that patience, where you've allowed that patience within you. And it's like, it's like aligning. You, you're like becoming aligned within yourself. 
You're allowing this alignment to happen. You're closing out very necessary chapters so you can open yourself up to bigger things. If this love hasn't shown up yet, it's because you're preparing yourself for it. You're getting heart-centered. And that's something that has been kind of, what's the word I'm trying to think of? That's something that has been elu elusive to you in the last seven, eight years. Like, why can I not just get heart-centered? Why am I constantly in this chaotic form of back and forth, up and down, in and out, you know? Um, allow yourself to go into the calmer waters of life. If that means, like, I, I just recently um, had a conversation with a friend of mine, and I told him, I'm like, your inner demons right now are really, really, really going to try and bring you down, and they're going to try and tell you that you're not good enough, and you're a treasure, and you need to recognize that, and you're a treasure in whatever you're doing. If you can't stand your job, try and do it with love anyways. Until you can find a better job for you to get to, Try and go to that job every day with love. And if you can't build up, you know, the build it up inside of you to go to that job every day with love, it's time for you to move, move on. It's time for you to get going on to another job. And I know that's easier said than done, but maybe the wheels in your head are now turning. I'm not happy here. I need to figure out what my Ten of Cups is. I need to figure out where I'm going in life. I need to figure out where my heart center is because now I don't have all the chaos around me and Chiron is trying to ask you to get to your, I just did that. I didn't even realize I did that, but it even has the heart. Okay. I can't with myself sometimes. You really need to get, <laughs> you need to get back to the heart center and allow yourself to do that. Give yourself permission to love every little thing that you're doing every day. And if you're not loving everything you're doing every day, it's time to move on from whatever that is, or just find another way to do it. So we have the Queen of Cups on the Five of Swords. If you are feeling like either somebody has deceived you or is lying to you in some way, um, or maybe you're just lying to yourself and it's bringing, it's kind of bringing you to your emotional knees is what I want to say. It could be, be because of some harsh words that are said. Mercury retrograde, people are not feeling themselves. And I always tell everybody, don't blame a planetary transit on the bad things that happen to you. But there's a lot of projection that's happening from other people. There's a lot of, like, nasty things that are being said, nasty communication that's being said by other people. And I think that half the time, people don't even realize that they're doing it. They don't even realize that they're projecting this negativity on everybody and the world and all of the things and stuff. So, um, you don't have to sit within it, but allow yourself to not be triggered by it because you're coming into an alignment with yourself. And when you're in an alignment, all of the bad things and all of the triggers and all of the people and all the situations, it's not that life get, is like easier than it was before. Um, it's just freer. You just feel more free. You handle situations. You handle people. You handle relationships in a much better way when you're in alignment. And that's what Uranus was trying to teach you. And I think that Chiron is really helping you get that push forward in order to align with yourself. Chiron is the wounded healer. And when it's in Aries, it's more of a warrior, a wounded warrior sense. Like you've been through the shit but you can keep going. It's like that nine of wands mentality, right? You can keep going even though you've already like been through the battle and you're all bloodied and bruised, you can keep going. And yeah, if and the thing is, hair, sorry, um, you got to use your intuition when it comes to people right now. Like I said, logic is not, it, there isn't, like we have two swords cards here, which is all about communication and logic, right? You're not going to be able to pinpoint what everybody wants from you logically or what everybody needs from you. You're going to have to feel your way through it. And you're not the only sign I've said that to. It's just not a time to try and talk your way out of things. It's not a time to... Um, push your way out of things. I feel like this air sign 
is kind of closed off right now. Whoever this air sign is could be a Gemini. They could, they're a little bit closed off right now. Um, but I feel like it's because they're up in their feels too. And Geminis are really in their feels right now. Like really, really, really in their feels right now. You may be the strength that your person needs, whether it's a water sign, a whether it's Sagittarius or a water sign or a Virgo or a Leo or an air sign, a Gemini, whoever it is in your life, I, you may be their inner strength right now. And I don't even think that you have a problem with that, but make sure that you're also taking care of yourself and don't let it become a codependency thing. Like that's, and the devil's not here. So I don't think it's a codependency thing, um, but I feel like there may be somebody that needs to, that needs you. And if you're not feeling it, if you can't be the strength for somebody else right now, be the strength for yourself. Because you have, you have a good energy, sorry, loudness outside. Um, you have a good energy that's around you, that's coming towards you. And, and you want to have this everlasting love in your life. And you don't want it to be like one of those illusions where one day it's really good and the next day it's gone. That's not what you're looking for. You really want to be able to close out chapters so you can have something serious to hold on to. And I feel that's coming to you. But you, you have, I feel like there are some things that you need to clear up for yourself and get really heart-centered. Find out exactly what it is you want, right? Page of Pentacles, see? Four of Swords, the Fool, the Seven of Cups, the Five of Pentacles, the Six of Cups. Yeah, oh, there's the Devil card. Chariot. Okay. Oh, okay. I get it. All right. Communication's going to be rough. Communication is going to be rough. So you really have to allow yourself time to pull back. It's almost your season, man. It's almost your season. And you want to have the energy for your season. Like it's going to come up in just a couple of weeks. And once we hit your season, um, it's all everybody on deck, like forward, like let's go. All the planets are going to be forward again. No more retrograde just for, you know, for a couple of months at least. All the planets are going to be forward again. Um, it is you. It is all, you know, and, and that is, that's where you shine the most is during your season. So allow your, allow more, like the beginning, like the next couple of weeks, just rest. Take a time out. Um... You have a lot of things coming up and a lot of new beginnings that are happening for you. The Fool and the Seven of Cups. And right now is so, like I said, right now it's so confusing. You're not going to want to be able to find, figure all this stuff out in a logical way. Feel your way through it. What feels good to you? What is it that um, speaks to your soul? Not what is it that's going to be best for my future income? It, it, Yes, you want to be able to have that on the back burner for when everything is direct again and we're all going forward. But for right now, it's, it is really all about your heart center and, and where you're allowing yourself to be true to your authentic nature of a cardinal fire sign. Don't let the past sink you back into a lack mentality. Because right now, during Mercury Retrograde, it is very easy for us to have situations from the past pop up in our minds, situations from the past come back into our lives or people or relationships or whatever. If you allow these situations, these are the inner demons right here. If you allow those situations to pull you back into a mindset that you're not good enough, that you're not doing enough, that you're not this, you're not that, blah, 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 it will be very very hard when it gets to your season to push forward again and when we get to your season hello chariot there's an i feel like there's an earth and it could be a virgo it may not be an earth sign but there's an earth sign that's moving very very slowly when you want to speed up a little bit more don't let the earth sign hold you back because i feel like the direction that you're going in is, and it may not even be, an, I mean, like, this could be you. Don't let yourself hold you back. 
the direction that you're going in is where you're supposed to be going. But all of that toxic energy that you that makes you stagnant is going to be present as well, right? And that's what I mean. This Mercury retrograde is one for the books because it's like we want to get things done. We want to get things going, but it's almost in a dream state. Like we're not entirely sure what time of day it is or what day it is or what am I supposed to be doing or where am I supposed to be or what's going on, what's happening, yada, yada, yada. But you, at the same time, you want to get going because your season's coming up and you want to be ready for it. The only thing I can say to you right now is if you move too fast right now, if you try and get things going in the moment right now and you don't just let yourself feel through this season, through Pisces season, it's going to get very, very rough for you when we hit your season. So my advice for you is to allow yourself to just kind of sit still. Think of things in a different way right now. It doesn't have to be all systems go all the time. We go through cosmic, universal, planetary transits um, to kind of force us into just getting quiet. I mean, instead of hustling all the time, align. Don't do the hustle, do the alignment. Right? And, and, and it's okay. Like, give yourself permission to rest, Aries. Um, because the, the toxic nature of wanting to move fast and fast and fast and fast and fast and fast and fast, and even the communication, like, there could be a lot of toxic communication that could be happening, and you're not even paying attention to it because you're like, oh my God, I can't even get my bearings right now. I just feel like I'm moving through sludge. Don't force it. If you feel like you're moving through quicksand, if you feel like you're moving through sludge right now, don't force it. The more you try and force it, the harder it's going to be to get there. So take a step back, allow yourself to think for a minute. You have some amazing opportunities and the universe is calling you to make decisions. And this is your season right here, just popping up right now. Towards the end of March, the Ace of Cups, the Ace of Wands, and Judgment. And then the Two of Wands and the Four of Wands. So you have a lot of, oh, and there you are, the Emperor. You have a lot of decisions that you're going to, it's just, it's almost going to like hit you over the head. Where the universe is like, okay, Aries, it's time to go. It's your season. Woo, let's go. Decisions, decisions. Let's make them now, right? Right now, all of these decisions look like that. All sorts of confusion. You know you want to get jump started on something. You're feeling it. Your season's coming. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm, we've been telling you to get ready for your season for months. So allowing yourself to just take a couple weeks off. <sighs> Easy, right? Just do it. It's okay. Because your season is beautiful. Like it's coming up. It'll be springtime. The flowers are coming. Everything's blooming. You are in charge of the world. Look at that guy. He's holding the world in his hands. And you're going to be ready. You're going to be ready to start new projects, start talking about new projects. Right? Page of Swords, Three of Pentacles. You're going to be ready. So it's okay if you have to take a step back right now. One of the biggest things that I have to tell people about coming into alignment, and if you're not aware, I am offering um, Mastering Yourself coming into alignment courses. I actually have one this Sunday and I still have a, few, a couple of um, spots for the class open. Um, it's on Sunday afternoon um, and all of the information is on my website, fearlessintuition.net. It's mastering yourself, coming into alignment. One of the biggest things I tell people about alignment is to give yourself permission to rest. We don't always have to hustle, 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 hustle. We've been programmed to believe that if we're not working really hard all the time constantly, then we're lazy. But if we're working hard all the time constantly and we're not allowing ourselves to take a step back and look at things in a different way and relax and breathe, all of those things that we've been working really, really hard on, we're going to be too exhausted to put into motion. So... When you're, you want to be prepared, you want to be ready for March 21st, March 20th, March 21st. So allow yourself to do it, okay? I love you guys so much. So if you're interested in the alignment class, that's on, and I also do one-on-one -on -one alignment coaching. 
I also do one-on-one -on -one, um, twin flame alignment coaching and um, all my readings are available as well. I love you guys. Um, fearlessintuition.net and check me out on Instagram too, fearlessintuition1111. And uh, I'm also on Twitter. It's Betsy33, but the E in Betsy is a three. So it's B3TSY33. I am everywhere. I love you guys. I'll see you for your season. Bye.